Hey, or oh, welcome, or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. Panic not. You have not segued back to 1940-something or other. If you were, I certainly would not be uh, spouting tattoos like this unless there was a harlot or a lady of the night. Thankfully, I am neither of those things. And it is not 1940. At least it wasn't last time I checked. The reason that you are watching me in black and white is because I don't want you to see this finished look until I finish the look. Now you will know if you have seen the thumbnail, the title and if you've even perused the description box that this is round three with the ever gorgeous, ever youthful Anne. Now it's my turn to choose the photo. So, if you want to find out exactly which photo I have chosen for us to be inspired by, and you want to find out exactly what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in the perfect place. Sit back, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Hey! <coughs> Welcome back from the intro. Um, I would have told you in the intro, which hopefully was in black and white, um, that this is round three with the ever beautiful, ever gorgeous, ever youthful Anne. Now, it was my turn to choose the photo and this time, I've got it on my phone here, I'm looking at it. Uh, let's put my phone in that way, I'll put the picture over there. This is a photo that was taken by a friend of mine, Maz. Now you might remember I used one of her photos before in um, one of the photo inspirations that I did with Marlin. This one is a photo that she took in her garden at night of bubbles and light shining through the bubbles. So, I mean, obviously the background is very deep bluey grey. The trees look black. There's a tiny bit of beige at the bottom, but my skin's beige, that'll cover that bit. And then the bubbles themselves have yellow and orange and pink and green and blue. Hmm. So, guess which palettes I'm using. Um, I pulled my Revolution Deep Dive out, reloaded Deep Dive for the grey because this is very much a sort of a blue toned grey. They've got three, they've got the light grey here. Let me swatch the three of them for you. That might be easier. Okay, so you've got the light toned grey a mid-toned grey and a deep grey um, and you probably can't really see much of a difference between the deep and the mid but the mid grey here is ever so slightly blue undertoned which will work perfectly for the sky element and I'm pulling this one out again because this pinky rose bright light palette has got 
a wafty bit of plastic I have to hold on to because of the glitters. Yellow, orange, pink, blue, no, blue and green. So it has all the colours that I need for the bubbles. I'm trying to work out a way of bending this Bright Lights palette back so I don't dazzle you with the mirror without actually cracking the back of the palette. But you can see, I'm like Jessica in that my palettes, no matter how well used they are, unless there's a big dent in one of them, they will normally look as if they haven't been used because I always clean my palettes and stuff before I put them back away. It's just something that I've always done. Now, um, regular viewers will know that my channel is a teaching channel. So I do go into quite in-depth explanations on things. So that if you are a complete beginner who's never picked up a brush before, you can follow the tutorial and know why we're doing things the way we're doing them. Um, and won't feel intimidated about following on. And um, also with my chronic pain, uh, there's times that I have to sort of stop and give myself a break because I'm having pain issues. But because of that, my tutorials can be a bit slower than others. However, there is a speed widget. Please feel free to use it. I won't be offended because I won't even know. Now, my face is washed. Moisturised, SPF'd and primed with my usual antiperspirant primer, details of which can be found in the film linked in my description box. Now, let's get you zoomed in. And unlike most people, when I say zoomed in, I mean you can only see my eyes. So you can actually concentrate and see what I'm doing. Um, all I've got on my eyes is the Crow and Pebble White Eyelid Primer. This one's called Cotton. Um, they do six different shades and the deepest two are a very deep chocolate and black. So you should be able to find a colour that will work for you. And as you can see, they do a pure white uh, for the super pale amongst us. Now, final little bit of waffling before I put colour on. I have deep set eyes, which um, I've noticed just recently are also being called double lidded eyes. Now, I have the same issues that people with hooded lids get, in that I get transference of shimmer up onto the top lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I can't just cut the socket I have to go up onto the upper lid and even when I am using glitter glue I will get a bare patch usually right through there. Now a lot of people with deep set eyes are mistakenly told or are under the impression they have hooded lids. So I just want to explain the difference for you. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I don't have a hooded lid. The definition of a hooded lid is if your static or upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your mobile lid. Then you have either a half or a full hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. All you have to do is get a brush, something like this, and on your static lid, sketch out about three or four, four mils up from effectively what will be your last line, and you're creating a new crease line. Now, obviously, that is going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. So just use slightly smaller brushes than I do. Now, for those of you with double lidded or deep set eyes, let me show you why we get the same issue 
that people with hooded lids have and why you may mistakenly have been told you have hooded lids. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back in out of the way. And if I do the same on the top lid, cover the visible static lid and close my eye, you can see I've got static lid there as well, which folds back in out of the way. So because the static lid and the mobile lid are rubbing against each other, that's why we get the similar issue that people with hooded lids get. Okay? But you don't have hooded lids. Um, you can, if you want, do yourself another crease line up here, but it will look a bit odd on you because obviously you are still going to have the shadow where your actual crease line is, which people with hooded lids would not have. Right, enough chatting. I want to put some colour on my eyeballs. Well, not my eyeballs, my eyelids. Oh, my eyeballs, that would be ridiculous. Right, this is a Morphe M321. And I'm going to go into Lit, which is this beautiful bright yellow in this palette. And I'm going to go smack bang in the middle. And bring it down to the edge of the visible bit. I'm not worried if it goes uh, onto my mobile lid because I'm putting a deeper colour through there anyway. I want the yellow. Now because I've not set this, it's not a sticky base, but because I've not set it, I'm not doing any blending just yet. I'm just patting the colour into position and into place because patting it on like this, I'm setting the lid. And by not setting the lid with a translucent powder, I'm getting the full benefit of the colour. Once it's on, I'm going to very gently blend along the top here just to soften that edge. I'm not going to do the sides yet because I'm going to wait until I put the next colour in against them. I'm just going to have a quick slurp of my drink. I'm sounding husky. Most un-ASMR. Starting to sound like Bonnie Tyler. Keep going like this, I'll be sounding like bloody Barry White. So, same thing this side. Now with this side, I can actually close my lid and show you because I'm blind in this side, so. You will see two slightly different applications. Now, with this side, where it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a child at the ophthalmic hospital, you can probably see these horrendously deep creases that I have here. Now, I do have to stretch my lid out when I'm tackling that bit because no matter how well I blend, it does not blend into those creases properly. But please, please, please do not pull your eye around like I have to, unless you already have the same problem as me. Otherwise you will have the same problem as me, and it will annoy the ever-loving whatever out of you. <clears throat> Family friendly channel. Right, I've got a clean washcloth and I'm just going to take the colour off of the brush. I think I'm going to work outwards and then come in. So I'm going to grab some Smash, which is the green. It really is a beautiful lime green. Look at that. And I'm going to slightly overlap the edge of the yellow. And then Again, pat myself a little rectangle on where I'm really just tapping the pigment into place, building the colour up to the depth that I want. I do struggle here and here on both eyes because of creasing. Um, I do sometimes when I blend find that it blends away. But I, if it does that I'll show you how to deal with it. So I'm just going to blend top there. I'm just going to take the colour off of the brush. I'm going to go back into the yellow because it's the lighter of the two colours and I'm going to blend where the two colours meet. I 
I like to try and leave a three or four mil gap at the top of my eyes there, but apparently today I didn't want to do that. If you think you've gone too far into the green, put a bit of green back on your brush and just either blend it back again or tap the colour back on. Mm. Now, you can see what I'm doing. It's going to be the same process for all of the other colours. So now I can talk to you about Anne. I, um, I've followed Anne for, crikey, months now. Must be almost getting on for a year, I'd say. And she always wrote such lovely things on my films. Um, but I was going through a stage where I'd had a bit of a knockback from... I'd asked someone that I'd followed for a, an equal length of time and I'd regularly commented on their videos and they'd, they'd liked my comments. Sometimes they'd replied to my comments. So I thought, oh, although they're a bigger YouTuber, they must recognise my name and stuff because they're always liking it, you know. I know it's more difficult when you're a bigger channel to, to remember names and stuff, but if you're regularly replying to me, then, you know, you, you, you probably must remember me. And I asked her if she wanted to do a collab. And, um, yeah, she was very rude. Um, it wasn't just myself she was rude to either. She was rude to Anya and Nona, and that's how we became the bitches of Eastwick. Because we'd all been shat on by the same one. Um, so I was, I was, I'd been wanting to ask Anne if she wanted to collab, but to be quite honest, I was a little bit scared too because of I've just had this knockback. And she commented on one of my films, one of my other photo inspiration films. I really love this series. I really hope you carry it on forever. And I just said, so long as there are people that want to collab with me, I'll keep doing it. And she sent me a message on... Oh, I can't decide which of these blues to use. This one, I think. Uh, she sent me a message on Instagram saying, do you want to do a collab? And I nearly fell off my chair, I was so excited. I'm like, oh my goodness, yes please. Um, and she said, awesome, can I join in your photo group? And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Because well, I started this off because I was always amazed how, oh, that's a nice blue, good choice, Angie. Um, I was always amazed how all these big YouTubers that get PR, they all get the same palette, but all of them do, did ever so slightly different, unless it was a warm neutral palette where you're going to end up with a warm neutral look. Um, they all did slightly different looks with the palettes. And that amazed me, because I was like, well, they've got exactly the same palette in front of them, the same inspiration, and yet they've all gone for a different look. And I thought then, if you were to have, rather than a whole palette to choose from, where obviously if you've got 14 colours, you're going to have, you know, the chances are you're going to have different looks from different people. I thought, well, if I chose a picture where you have maybe five or six colours in it, sometimes fewer, you know, sometimes it's gradients of, of the same colour, like lots of different greens, for example, and then maybe a pink. Um, I, thought, I wonder how people would use that inspiration and what sort of looks they create and whether the looks would be different or similar. Um, and the first person I asked to collab with this was Nikki Raven. And thankfully she said yes. She's my YouTube wifey now, by the way. If ever you hear me refer to my YouTube wifey, I'm talking about Nikki. If I'm talking about my YouTube mistresses, that's Anya and Nona. Oh, and my YouTube daughter is Chelsea. I have got a whole family of people that I'm not even related to. That I've not even met. 
And do you know what? I love it because you haven't got an invite around for Christmas. But, um, yeah, so the, the only rules with my photo inspiration, because Nikki said, well, you know, what are the guidelines, what are the rules, what, how do we, you know, what's... I said, well, you can only use the colours that are in the picture. So, because I got so fed up of seeing people always, not Nikki, because she's always doing very colourful looks, but I got so fed up of seeing people doing a colourful look, but always bloody starting it off with brown through the crease as their transition. Why? Why can't you use a lighter blue for the transition or a light green for the transition? Why does it always have to be brown? And it frustrated the heck out of me. Um, so I thought, I'm not going to give people the option. If it's my series, it's my rules. I'm not going to give people the option of adding any other colours. Now, obviously, there will be some discrepancies because, you know, I'm looking at it on my mobile. And I will admit there are times when, when I then get round to editing the footage and I see the, the picture on my laptop because obviously my laptop is um, different resolutions, etc. Sometimes I'll see colours differently and I'll think, oh, blimey, I thought that was a, a blue, but it's really a green. Or, oh, blimey, I saw that as a black and it's actually a grey. But it's, it all comes down to the colours that you see in the photo. So if you see the colour a certain way, that's the colour you use. So there may be some slight differences, but normally um, we end up with using the same colours. You don't have to use all the colours that are in the picture, but you cannot add any in. So for example, I'm not going to do that beige, because it's beige and I, I, I don't do beige when I worked in offices and it was magnolia walls it drove me absolutely crackers honestly I just I know they do it because it's the cheapest paint but really couldn't we just have a nice lilac or a nice lemon and lime maybe just I felt stifled in offices I think I think that was my problem to be honest um, the blue by the way was cloud and I'm now going to go into dreamsicle for the orange and then Becky for the pink just in case you're wondering um, yeah so Anne was like you know can I, can I join in with your photo thing and I'm like oh my goodness yes please and that really did I love the fact that you know this was an idea that I came up with with my chronic pain I'm very often awake at stupid o'clock in the morning um, and that's when I get a lot of my ideas. I've always got a notepad and pen beside the bed um, and I'll just I'll write down, well that would be a good photo, that would be a good um, film idea or this would be a good film idea uh, and I just thought this was this was one of the ones that I'd had a I think it was a 333. 333's has followed me all my life. It was 3.33 in the morning. I'd woken up with chronic pain. Couldn't get back to sleep. Started to watch some YouTube videos. And it was when there'd been a palette just released and there were a lot of people that had got the PR. Well, it was about to be released, and a lot of people have got the PR. So I watched a lot of reviews on that particular palette. Um, I'm trying to remember what palette it was. I think it might have been the Norvina palette. Or was it Soft Glam? It was a. I think it was an Anastasia palette, anyway. And it just it astounded me that that's when it hit me, wow they've all got the same palette but they're all producing ever so slightly different looks um, and that's when this thought of using a photo as inspiration rather than doing a palette bingo where you have to use the same colours so it's, it's kind of like a palette bingo but it's a bit different because you know you, 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 you have the same inspiration because you have the same photo to start with but it's up to you whether you use all the colours in that photo Whereas obviously with palette bingo you have to use all the colours 
um, but in this if you didn't want to use all of the colours like I'm this is very pride like again isn't it oh it matches my nails oh, it does match my nails um, you know if you if you decided you didn't want to use the blue or you didn't want to use the yellow you don't have to if you just wanted to do um, quite a stark grey smoky eye and then use like um, is it super water gel water UV liners and just do a huge like neon green wing if that's your interpretation of the photo that's absolutely fine whereas with palette bingo you have to use all the colours you know so and with palette bingo very often you can add colours in so this was you know this this was something that this was my baby this was my my little plan and I've, I've just been so pleased that so many people because you know you come up with these ideas and obviously you think they're, they're brilliant ideas but they, they might not be you know so it's a little bit scary it's not not so bad if you're doing something like oh let's both use this palette and, and do a palette bingo or you know give each other a colour to do and do a monochromatic look because this is you know th those are things that that are around already but to suggest something completely new and have people think a it's a good idea and b after they've done I always give people the option for the first round do they want to choose the picture and so far everyone's gone no you choose the picture for the first one and all of them have come back and said can we do round two and can I choose the picture this time so I, it's it's so lovely I've done for like four rounds with some people um, and it's so lovely that people have loved my idea and have taken it on board and, and really run with it and it, it's just such a lovely compliment and the fact that Anne said can we collab can I please join in your series it was just Oh, it made me so happy, it really did. And it's, you know, she's she's definitely... I've made some very, very good friends on YouTube. And she is definitely one of them. She's she's one of the people that if I won the lottery... Not that I play the lottery. But, you know, so it would be a bloody miracle. Um, but if I won the lottery and could travel to America first class where I could actually sit comfortably because economy seats my pain levels it's just not going to happen anymore folks I'm sorry um, but you know if I could afford to go first class where I could actually have decent leg room decent butt room and I could you know room to, to move and wiggle about um, she's absolutely one of the people that would be on my list to go and see I mean I would love 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 to you know husband and brother-in-law Um, you know, just go across to America. I'm the only one that drives, so it'd be all down on me. But I'd love to just, you know, hire a big, you know, traditional American car, something like a, uh, uh, oh, what were they? The caddies with the big, like, space wings at the back for the lights. Was that 56 or was that a 53 caddy? I can't remember. But I'd, you know, I'd love to just hire one of those and just drive around America and just see all the places that I've seen on TV shows and heard in songs and stuff. You know, I, I want to go to Nashville. I'd love the chance to sing at the Blue Bell Cafe. Um, you know, and, and take in a show at the Old Opry. You know, I want to go to New Orleans and, and take part in, one, you know, or see one of the street parades they have there. And, you know, enjoy, you know, the, the different cuisines and stuff. Um, there's just so many places I want to go and want to see. And uh, Anne would absolutely be on my list of YouTube friends that I would want to go and visit. Because I get the feeling if we lived closer, we would be having coffee in each other's houses and either creating havoc 
or setting the world to rights. One of the two. She really is a lovely lady though. I mean, she does not look her age. When, because when she changed her channel name to hashtag Glam60, I thought she was joking. Well, why you got Glam60 then? What's that? What, 60 different looks you're going to do in a month or something? She went, oh, no, I'm, I'm 60. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, don't believe it. So, I don't know what her trick is, but or what they got in the water where she lives. But that woman does not look like a 60 year old, I tell you. She sure as heck doesn't behave like one, which is bloody awesome. She produces some amazing colourful looks. She's not frightened of colour at all. Probably just as well, given the photo that we're using today. It's really annoying me because in my mirror, there is no patchiness. In my viewfinder, I've got a little bit here. It just does look really patchy. There we go. I say this sometimes, you know, and then when I'm doing, watching the HD footage back when I'm editing it, it doesn't look patchy at all. And I just think, oh, you must sound like a complete klutz, Ange. <sighs> oh, this is just so much fun! <laughs> I'm such a child, aren't I? <clears throat> such a child! Right. Let's grab a different brush. I might give this elf one a go, this elf blending eye brush. I finally managed to pick up the old uh, Elf Paulist Putty Primer, which in the UK has been out of stock ever since Jeffree Star approved it. The US got three or four restocks through Ulta and through the Elf website, but the UK, we didn't get it restocked until last week. Yeah. So, I'm just going into shade. 13 and tapping off because it is actually quite quite a dusty one but I don't mind that because at least it means you're picking up the pigment on your brush so obviously now I'm going in with the night to sky I'm just going to pop it on the outer part of the lid and then gently run it through my crease. Now, if you've moved your crease, follow the line that you've put down. Now, I was fully expecting fallout with this, which is why I've not done my base. How low can you go? Oh, sorry, the heat's getting to me, I swear it is. And my fibro, my eyes are watering like mad. So the grey got wet there, which is why it looks a little bit funky. I'm just going to go back in with some of the lighter grey. Which is um, a shimmer. And then pick up some of the deeper grey over the top. Just to do some little buffing along this line. I'm keeping the brush in contact with that first line that I've put down because I'm just trying to soften the edge, I'm not trying to take it up the eye at all because obviously I've done a lot of work there to make it look pretty I don't want to cover too much of it up but just adding that little bit of shimmer to it gives you the kind of night sky effect that I was wanting yes I like this a little bit more of that and take it about halfway across the eye I think. Can't see a damn thing now because I've closed this eye. I'm absolutely relying on muscle memory right now folks. Oh look at that, I was nearly off screen. Nice. And now I'm do the same thing on the other side. 
obviously with this one, I can close my eyes because I'm blind in this one and I can see in the other one. <laughs> so how's your day been? You had a good day? Are you watching me at the start of your day like Christopher J M U A does? To ease you into your morning? Or are you watching me? sneakily at lunchtime to try and chill out because you've been stressed out at work or school or college or are you watching me in the evening to try and chill out and wind down a bit let me know what time of day do you watch me let me know in the comments I'd love to know if you are at the start of your day like Christopher I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day if you're watching me at lunchtime because you're stressed and hoping my calming voice will help relax you before you have to go back in again and if you're watching me at the end of the day I hope I'm helping you relax before bed if you do struggle sleeping I do have um, I've got a folder called I think it's called relax uh, where I've actually got a couple of films in there. One of them is designed for actually helping you get to sleep. And the other one, um, I'm actually reading a poem. My favourite poem. Uh, and people have said they find that super relaxing as well. So hopefully between those two films that are in there, you should help soothe your sleep. Or just stick a playlist on, start me going, and just, you know, I'll witter away at you while you sleep. Some might say that would be a nightmare. Oh, I'm just going to get rid of some of this. I always get more fallout on this side because the skin on this lid is looser because it got pulled around so much when I was a kid. But as I said, that is quite a dusty shade anyway in there, so I was fully expecting that. Right, going back into my Pinky Rose Bright Lights palette. And I'm actually going to grab the same brush that I used for the top, the, uh, the Morphe M321. And I'm going to go into Glitz. And put this on. I'm just going to grab a little mirror so I can look down so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm not going to wet this shimmer shade because I don't want it to be too dazzling. I'm going to pop this just on the first half of the lid and gently buff it in with the grey because obviously the night sky as it goes down gets lighter. So rather than using beige. I'm using some artistic license and using a shimmery blue instead. Now I especially have to pull my lid out when I'm doing shimmers otherwise they um, pack into the, the uh, deep creases here and as I move my eye during the day I start getting multicoloured freckles which if that's the look you're going for great, great shortcut. Uh, if it's not the look you're going for it can be a bit annoying. In fact it can be highly annoying as opposed to Haile Selassie who was an athlete. <laughs> Sorry, my hubby and I have this thing where if we say genius we go it's like a genius. arse. We say he's a genius as opposed to a genie's arse which would be blue and sound like Robin Williams. Um, I suppose now it'd be blue and sound like Will Smith, but Robin Williams is, shows our age better. But he'd be, you know, I say something like, I'm a genius, and he'd say, as opposed to a genie's arse, which I would then go, which is blue, and he'd finish it with, and sounds like Robin Williams. So depending on who says the word genius depends on, you know, who says the other bits of it. Just shows you how nuts we are as a couple, doesn't it, really? Why I got kids love spending time with us, I think. They're as nutty as a fruitcake. 
Okay, I like that. Right, I'm going to pause you while I um, pop some foundation on, etc. Do all this fall out here. And then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So you're going to see me instantly. I'll see you the next time I press the record button. So here we go. I am back. Right. I'm going to go into the uh, Revolution Deep Dive palette again for the grey. And I've grabbed out that flat top brush that I showed you earlier. Right, so I'm going to go into um, the grey that we used before. Yeah, this really is a loose grey, this one. I am tapping off like hell because I do not want to get it all down my face. And I'm just going to connect it to the grey there. And run it under the lash line. And then pick up some of the loose pigment on the top so I'm not wasting it. And do the same thing this side. Now, I have been struggling recently with wearing eyeliner because my eyes have been so, so watery. Partly hay fever, partly fibro. But a trick that I have found is to really load your brush up and just at the edge, just put one deeper. It's barely imperceptible until you get really up close, but it does give you that illusion of the wing pulling your eye out and up. What's really important though is if you're gonna put another color underneath to smudge that gray out, or whatever color you're using, you need to stop here, because if you come up to this bit, you lose the wing effect. Now I think I am going to blow that colour out just a little bit. And I think I'm going to go into one of the blues in this palette. Because obviously it does go down through blue before it gets to beige. That's why I've got the blue here. So I think I'm going to go into shadow number three, this one. This is a this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's perfect because being flat topped and a little bit chunky, it gets right up under your lashes really nicely. I'm just going to gently buff that lower lash line a little bit. Oh, my eyes really starting to stream. Do not do that yet. You can do it when I've finished filming, but not yet. Not yet. Let me film and get some photos. Heavy that side, never mind, it doesn't matter. Everything's fixable. That'll do. That'll do. Sound like my husband. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Right. I'm going into the Ofra Nikki Tutorials Space Baby highlight, which has got the blue reflect through it. And I'm going to run that up under my brow. Yes, I actually did normal coloured brows today because I wanted the colour impact to be on my eyes rather than my brows. I did feel weird digging out a brown brow pencil, I tell you. So, pop that up under the brow, and then in a corner. Now you can just do in a corner. Like so. But for my eye shape, I've actually found it's really flattering to bring it under the tear duct and just blend it in really gently with the, the colour that we've run under the eye. don't have to do that, that's why I said we could fix this bit because I knew I was going to blend the highlighter into it. Hmm. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I put highlighter all over my face, choose a mascara, choose a lipstick, uh, do something with this hair. 
and I'll be back with my final look. I am back. My hair would not behave. So I thought I'd put my little rainbow cat ears on just to tie in with the babooosh. Right. Mascara is the Rimmel Scandalize Reloaded Waterproof. Which has got a super big fluffy Christmas tree like brush. And the lipstick is Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit in Bud Romance. Ra 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 ma ra ma ma ga ga ooh la la. That's enough. Otherwise, I'm going to get struck with a copyright, aren't I? <coughs> oh no! I've just remembered why I hated this bloody. I just remembered why. I just pulled it out the back of there thinking, oh, I've not used that one for a while, I wonder why not. <laughs> just remembered why. It's a very, very wet formula. And because my lashes are so long, naturally, I end up with spider's legs all under my eyes. Which, really, I should have waited for them to dry. And then I wipe them off. But... When do I ever do things that I'm meant to do? That's a very good question. I don't, as a rule, do what I'm meant to do. It's far more fun breaking the rules. I guess that's why I was never a prefect at school. I reckon I'd be a bad influence and so that's why they wouldn't make me a prefect. I don't think I'm a bad influence. Uh, maybe just a little bit. What I'm doing is, um, Oh, I'd forgotten how soft this. I love the Coty Air Spun Powder. It leaves your skin feeling so soft. Uh, this is a different powder though. I'm just popping on over the top. This is the uh, AOA Brightening Powder that I got from Shop Miss A. Which, when you have an oopsie moment with mascara, it's great to just whack on underneath on your finger, which I've got to be really careful with nails like this, I tell you. Uh, does anyone else pull really funny faces when they're doing their lashes? Or well, in this case, they're under the eyelashes. Um, yeah, this is the um, AOA Studio Perfect. Yeah, it's just called Brightening Powder. Shade 020. It's got a bit of peach to it, so it does actually help if you've got super, super dark circles. Um, I just prefer the finish that Coty Airspun gives me. It's so soft and strokeable like velvet. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about... In fact... So that doesn't happen again? That one's going in the bin. I'm not having my eye looks ruined again. No. Not happening. I'm ruthless when it comes to things like that. Uh, so, this is my... Do you know, if you've come here from Anne's channel, you must think I'm an absolute nutcase. Eh, probably not far wrong. Right, this is my final look. Inspired by this photo. Taken by my friend Maz. Of bubbles in the evening light. What do you think? Think I've done a good representation of the picture? Okay, there's, there's, there's more dark on the picture than there is light, and I've done mine the opposite way around, but I like bright colours, what can I say? And those of you who know me, you probably guessed I was going to go for something like this, right? Yeah, you know. You guessed. But what do you think? Would you have done it like this? Let me know in the comments box how you would have done this. Or if you have uh, Insta and you want to try and recreate it, or do your own version of how you would have done it, then please do so and tag myself and Anne because we would both love to see it. Right, now. If you are one of my 4F babies, please, now you've watched me, 
go over and watch Anne's film and see how different or similar our looks have turned out and show her the same love and support that you show me in my comment section. Thank you. If you are here from Anne's channel, hi, hello, welcome. This is actually probably a pretty good representation of what most wife films are like. I blether, I wander off from subjects and then come back to them. Uh, but for some reason people seem to find that quite fun. I've got a lot of other films if you wanted to check them out and see if you like my style, if you wanted to see more before you hit the subscribe button. If not, and you're already reaching to turn my subscribe button grey, when you do that, please, 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 ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications, because otherwise you'll get no notifications, because YouTube seems to hate micro-influencers right now. Right. All oh, that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.